Hello and welcome back to Art Masters with me, Mrs. Portia. Today we're going to be doing abstract art by Kandinsky and he was to many the founder of abstract art. Abstract means not realistic, although Kandinsky usually had a theme with his art and once you knew the theme, sometimes you could decipher what the picture was meant to be. Now, Kandinsky spent much of his time studying the effect of color and shape. Feelings. So sometimes he would play music and he would try to make his shapes emulate what the music felt like or looked like in his mind. So today we're going to be making some themed abstract art using geometric shapes. And our theme is going to be food. What would Kandinsky serve you if you came over for maybe breakfast? or dinner. So today we're going to use our abstract geometric shapes and we're going to create a theme and make some lovely dinner plates. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so to start our geometric design by Kandinsky, we are going to have our paper and some of our templates. So I want you guys to watch first. So Kandinsky, even though his work was abstract, he always had a theme. So our theme is either going to be maybe Kandinsky invited you over for dinner or lunch or breakfast. So we're going to think about a food, like a plate. So here's an example. This person, oh, did some abstract pizza. Maybe you prefer some nice abstract salad with the geometric shapes. Ooh, or a tasty breakfast. So my favorite meal is breakfast. But I'm so going to use my square. Now this could be a napkin, right? So we have a nice square napkin. So I'm going to think about where I want to place this on my paper because we're always thinking about balance, right? I think I'm going to put mine at a bit of a diagonal. If you move around your template and you decide you're happy with it, we can trace with pen. If you feel a little unsure, it's okay to start with pencil. Good, and when I'm tracing, I went nice and slow so I didn't scribble all over. Another idea of a napkin, sometimes napkins are folded napkins. So I'm gonna take my shape and just fold the tip to the tip. And now I have a triangle shape and I'm gonna have this one be a folded napkin. All right, so let's have everybody Get their big white paper and a marker or a pencil if you feel more comfortable. And we're gonna start with our napkin shape, which is just tracing our square template. Great job. So now any food that we eat, we have to eat it on a plate, right? And plates are what shape usually? They're round, they're usually round. So we're gonna use our little paper plate as a template and we're gonna put it face down and trace it. So let's watch what I do. So Kandinsky, if you look at his sample in class, he overlapped a lot of shapes, right? So we don't need to put it right next to it. We're gonna overlap it. And when we color it, it's gonna be very interesting. So this is where you get to be creative. How much do you want it to overlap? A little bit, a lot. And so. then I'm gonna hold down, and again, I'm gonna go ahead and trace with my pen. So let's go ahead and take our plate template, and we are going to trace our circle shape, and we wanna overlap our square or our triangle. Awesome, so here's where you guys get to be extra creative. This is where we're all gonna really differ. So let me show you some examples again. Now we wanna think about what our food is. So I think I'm gonna do some eggs and bacon. Um, maybe your favorite dish is spaghetti and meatballs. So I'm gonna show you a couple of ideas. So first, I think I'm going to start with a fork. Now, what can our fork look like? If you look at our little shapes here, you can see here's what real forks look like, but maybe an abstract fork looks a little bit more like this. And same with a spoon. 
And then here's some ideas of what a glass might look like it's using simple shapes to make it abstract. So let me show you. Let's start with two simple things you could decide after. Let's do a fork. So I'm going to start with template. This is going to be the head of the fork. This is going to be like where the pokes are. So think about where you want your pokes. Maybe you want to be proper and put it on your napkin. So sure, I'll put my fork on my napkin. So I'm going to start here. And instead of drawing all the way around my shape, I'm going to do a half circle. So let's everybody say half circle. Right, so I'm only going to trace half of my circle because I want it to look like pokes. But guess what? If you make a mistake and you trace all the way around your circle, we can make that a spoon. Let me show you. So here's my fork. Every fork needs a handle. So I'm always going to be using a straight edge to make my shapes very precise, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make kind of a long triangle for a handle and putting it kind of at a diagonal. See, like that. And then I'm going to make a little matching line right next to it. And then I'm going to connect the bottom. To do a spoon, you're going to do the same handle. You use your straight edge. But this one, maybe I'll make it more exciting and have it coming off of the plate. Now to make my little forky prongs, I'm going to use my template here. And I'm just going to add a little curved friend. And then maybe I just do a straight one. Awesome. So now we're going to really think about what our theme is. Are we doing lunch? Are we doing breakfast? So I'm like I said, I want to do breakfast. So if you look at this, I like a tasty fried egg. And in my the middle of my fried egg is a lovely circle. And you see how this person overlapped their circle with all these other shapes. That's what I'm going to do as well. So looking at my plate, I'm going to take this is going to be the round part of my egg. Uh, let's see. Oh, maybe I will place it there. And like I said, I kind of like the look of overlapping my circle. So we're just, we're just drawing simple shapes. And then to make my egg shape, egg shapes are a blob. So I'm going to do a freestyle shape, shape around my egg. And then your bacon, if you want to do bacon, you can use your straight edge and make a long rectangle or you can make squiggly bacon. So this person did a squiggly bacon. I think I'm going to try using my template. And now I got to decide which way do I want my bacon to go. So I don't want it to go that way. I think I kind of want it to go across my page. So I'm going to do um, use my template to make a very precise rectangle that I'm going to turn into a bacon. So, let me give you one more example. If you want to do meatballs, does anybody like spaghetti and meatballs? We can add. So we could do some big giant meatballs or we could do these tiny size meatballs. I think I'm going to do some tiny meatballs. And for spaghetti, spaghetti is squiggly lines, right? So again, you could use your straight line or you could do some squiggly lines. So I'm gonna make some squiggly spaghetti. And then we're just gonna use the templates that we have. Use the circle shape. And then maybe you're gonna make some rectangle shapes. We're gonna keep it very simple. So maybe you only put one or two items to make your plate. Okay, hey, great job guys. So now if you want, we can add a little bit more. If you're happy with your design, that's great. We'll get to coloring in just a moment. So I'm gonna add a little bit more. Um, to this one, I might add 
a little middle line for my bacon just to make it look a little bit more like bacon. This one, I think I'm gonna make a cup of juice. Just like I'm gonna take my big circle since I have a lot of space right here. And I might just put it off to the side like this. And since this is a juice, I'm gonna add a straw. And a straw, a diagonal line with a little hat. So if you want, you can add just a little bit more detail. We're not doing a lot of detail. We're keeping it very simple, simple shapes. But if you wanted to add a little detail on your bacon or a cup, if you have a big empty space anywhere, you can go ahead and do that. Awesome. And lastly, for you older kids, if you want to add a pattern to your napkin, like you second graders, uh, you can. You don't have to, but if you wanted to add a pattern to your napkin, we would still use our straight edge because we're always gonna be precise. And let's do it to this napkin here. You could just use your template and make some lines. So this is optional for our older kids. Okay, awesome job. Everyone should have their drawing. Now, if you did yours in pencil and you're happy with it and your lines are dark, that's great. If you need to go over it with marker, go ahead and do that before we color. But it's okay if you leave it in pencil as long as it's dark. So we're gonna use our plastic crayons today. And when you look at Kandinsky's work, he used very bright colors. A lot of times he used primary colors, our red, yellow, and our blue. Those are the colors that I'm gonna start with. Now his stuff wasn't always realistic colors either, so you can be creative with the colors you're using. And when we're coloring, remember we talked about value, light. When I push very, very lightly, I get a very light value, not very dark. When I push dark, when I push hard, I get a dark, bright value. So we're gonna start with light pressure, because guess what? We can always add more, but we can't erase these plastic crayons. So what are we gonna start with? Light pressure. So that means light color, holding your crayon lightly. Watch how I just color a couple of these shapes and then we'll go ahead and move you forward. And you don't actually have to color in every spot. You could leave some areas white if you want. Okay, so you see how so far I've just used very light pressure. And for the bacon, instead of using something kind of um, boring like brown, I got something a little bit brighter like red. So go ahead, you can watch me and fast forward. My first coloring is gonna be very light. And then okay, great job guys. So we should have kind of a light coloring all over. As you can see, I try to keep the colors bright. Sometimes I even used complementary colors. So for example, Blue's complementary color is the opposite color on the color wheel, orange. So blue and orange next to each other really pop. Green and red next to each other really pop. So you'll see how sometimes the colors pop a little bit more than other colors, depending on what they are next to. We're gonna push a little bit harder in some areas. So let me show you how in this one, I, covered, I colored some overlapping areas and some I left blank. This one, I colored with two colors. So this middle circle, I colored the red, and then I colored the orange over. So now I'm kind of getting a blend. So, and for you older kids, if you want, you could outline some of your shapes by pushing harder with your crayon and making some of those shapes pop. So that might be something for you second graders. If you Otherwise, for everybody else, if we wanna just pick a couple of colors that we wanna make darker to really pop out, 
And if you want to push harder and make a couple of areas darker so they pop a little bit more, you can go ahead and do that now. Otherwise, let's keep coloring. Okay, excellent job, guys. So you should have now made some areas a little bit darker, pushing harder to get those bright colors. Um, some of you might have used some contrasting colors like purple and yellow, which is making things really pop. And when we're finished, you're gonna use your glue and you're going to glue your piece on some nice colored construction paper. And then when you flip it over, you're gonna put your name on the back and glue our little Kandinsky sticker on the back so you know whose art we did. And then you are finished with your geometric abstract design. And hopefully your theme is food related like dinner or breakfast. So awesome job guys. All right, awesome job today guys with your geometric abstract design. Hopefully we all can see what our theme is, breakfast or dinner or lunch. If you have time to evaluate each other's work, you could point out if anyone used any contrasting colors like the opposite colors. If you like the way someone overlapped their shapes or the balance of their composition. So I hope you enjoyed your abstract themed geometric art by Kandinsky.